no one's going to want to touch me. <laughs> well, that depends on what you dress up your wife as. All right, if you wanted to do a cosplay, what character or figure or what would you, what would be your entry as a first timer? Mm. Oh, tricky. First, uh, probably something Mad Maxian. Yeah, uh, definitely as my first. And I, when I think about cosplay, I, I feel it's. I would like to be into the you know, Warhammer Games Workshop, especially Warhammer 40k, because they have a really good graphic look on it. But I don't know anything about anything, and but like a big power armor that would be fun. Saying that, I mean something from Fallout would also be nice. So yeah, probably Fallout or Mad Max for me. You, Glenn? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm, it's it's long sucking. Some... <laughs> I think that would be good for you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The only thing I ever thought about dressing up for was uh, we, we almost went to a Rocky Horror Picture Show once upon a time, and I uh, thought about oh, who to... Who in that? Oh. Well, Rocky, obviously. <laughs> Just wear the gold trunks. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's you would you would you would would be a good Rocky, I think. <laughs> Rocky in his older years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, a vintage Rocky. No it's one's going to be want to. No one's going to want to t- 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 touch me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on what you dress up your wife as. <laughs> She might be a good Fra- uh, Dr. Frankenfurter, I think. <laughs> That's enough of that one. Anyway, what about you, <laughs> Oh, Mad Max was a good universe, but I was thinking Star Wars, but one of the new spin-offs, I don't, uh, the, the Purple Gunman or something, uh, something, something Kane, I think. That was a really fun character. And then I also think that I could work with a lot of new materials. I mean, if I do a Mad Max character, it would probably be some leather working and some accessories and so on. But I see some of the cosplayers that I follow on Instagram that really works with various kinds of foam and everything and what they actually can make that look like. It's really impressive. So that's a skill I really would want to have because I could do so much different with it. So yeah, maybe that would be like an entry, but I might be setting the bar too high. I don't think the, the result will <laughs> probably be very good. It looks really fun that making out of, out of foam, as you say. And I, I think that's why I, I gravitate uh, towards a power armor or something like that, because I'm, I'm not really that bulky myself. So I would need something to, so i don't i mean i don't go to the gym so i need something that fills me up so to say padding out a little yeah yeah padding out exactly (laughs) yeah i've seen a few people that have a prosthetic leg and a few of them are really into accessorizing them because they are makers as well and i would think that if i have a prosthetic leg or something i would probably just be doing that in my workshop. What can I add to this? <laughs> yes. And of course, having 100%. Iron Man on rerun <laughs> on the pad in the background. I think just put a giant auger on it. Yeah, that could be one. That'd be cool. <laughs> I would have yeah. so many legs. I mean, that would be like that scene in the Matrix where just we need <laughs> we need guns, lots of them. <laughs> we need legs, lots of them. Just shells and shells and different <laughs> kinds of. <laughs> Some just one big hammer and one is something robotic and like three different arms in one. And yeah, I would have too much. So take your inspiration oh, from animals and go for like a, a flamingo leg or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> a really that tiny orange one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. 
Is it Deadpool, Deadpool 2 where he's got little baby legs at one stage when he's growing them back after it's been cut in half? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so freaky. That's really fun if you're, if you're missing a leg and just have an, a prosthetic that is just a doll leg. So it's like <laughs> 50 centimeters long just dangling and you're walking on crutches because you're growing it back. That's so good. Oh. I think uh, we're bordering on dangerous territory now. Um, changing the subject, have you seen that people have been sharing their Spotify um, playlists or whatever on yeah. the top five? Yeah. We've not appeared on one yet, have we? <laughs> <laughs> I would be surprised, uh, considering that we started so late in the year. But next year, we'll definitely be there. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, definitely. No, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it's more... The algorithms of Spotify is prioritizing quantity over quality. So we might have to ramp up the numbers of half pints. Yeah, or the length of the episodes. Numbers. Change them to the quartz that you were talking about in an earlier episode. <laughs> yeah, or we can do like, uh, I think there was a couple of ca- a bands we could... that did this to show the finger to Spotify. They made some silent tracks. Yeah, And then they ask their fans to just, when you go to bed at night, just put this on repeat. And then, of course, they could sleep because it was a silent track. But, of course, they racked up a lot of plays uh, at Spotify, <laughs> which ramped up their payouts. And, of course, Spotify took notice relatively fast and changed some of their parameters. But it worked for a while. We could so- really, really chop up the half pint and call it a spoonful of medicine. <laughs> just one each day instead. Yeah. It become a daily. <laughs> <laughs> just shop the conversation where you feel like yeah, it. Pod, a podcast yeah. a day keeps the whatever away. Yeah. <laughs> Sanity <laughs> away, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, the amount of times when I'm listening to a podcast at work, I, so I've got the earphones in and then my ear defenders over the top of that, and somebody will come up to me talking to me, and I, you say, wait. One minute, one minute, you've got your finger up. And they just carry on talking. You've got to do this and take them out. Yeah. What were you saying? <laughs> That's fun. When I, I got pulled, I've been pulled over a couple of times uh, riding my motorcycle. And then, of course, I have uh, my earplugs. And then you have the helmet. And, of course, you have, of course, riding a motorcycle in Norway, you have the scarves and uh, the neck piece and everything. And then, of course, when they signal you to stop and then of course they have already gotten up to you and started talking and you can see their mouth moving it's like you're pointing at the helmet while you're taking everything (laughs) off and just pulling out and can you repeat that (laughs) did you know where fast you were going no (laughs) (laughs) do you have a motorbike now Havard? no um i sold it a few years ago when i i rode my relatively new bike twice that season before I put it away again. And it's like, yeah, well, it's not, I'm paying insurance and of course I need to stack it away in the workshop somewhere and it's not, well, it's not getting used. So I just had to sell it. What do you have? Well, the last one was a uh, Husqvarna actually. Yeah. Uh, the new 701. Uh, Viet Pilen, which was it was a very nice for commuting and so on. So driving into Oslo and so on, it was really nice. But uh, after we got kids and then I ch- swapped uh, workplace and so on, it, it didn't get any use. And finding a few hours here to just dress up and hitting the highway, it's, of course, I got quite decent uh, at uh, knowing all the back roads here but at some point it became tedious so if you want to try something new you had to spend too much hours riding and then of course yeah so for a later day it's going to be a midlife crisis down the road somewhere yeah (laughs) probably i wouldn't want another motorbike to ride as such but i'd I'd quite like one to make a project out of one day Yeah, make make a cafe racer style motorbike out of something extremely fast would be good fun, I think. I did that a few years ago. I, I built uh, a bobber. Yeah. Actually. Um 
and it wasn't for me. I didn't, and of course, I I I, I borrowed um, a colleague's workshop, so of course, I didn't have all the proper tools. So it was uh, tedious work, but still, I don't think if I had a proper shop that I would enjoy custom building or restoring motorcycles and so on. I, I like to ride them, but then again. This being Norway, uh, we went to Barcelona one year, and when you see people just uh, jumping onto their scooters or motorbike in uh, leisure wear and just uh, going yeah. around and like, <laughs> okay, back home, I need to put on a full leather suit. So, of course, <laughs> it's freezing most of the time, but a few days it's bearable, it's too hot. And yeah, it's, of course, people will argue, but Norway is not the best for every day riding a motorcycle you need to be over a certain level of interested in motorbikes to just venture into that segment met some uh, when i was on holiday in scotland earlier on this year i met some swedish bikers yeah two two couples out there big beards <laughs> they'd uh, ridden over from uh, sweden on the harley davidson's having a ball of a time yeah yeah <laughs> The nicest place to actually drive a motorcycle is in on the west coast in Norway. And of course, having a ferry going from Bergen to, I think it was Manchester for a period. So we had a lot of people coming over from Britain uh, to ride. So I met a lot of people. Nice. You've had bikes as well, haven't you, KJ? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I was in the same position that I I noticed that I the I had rode my bike to the, to the MOT. Yeah. Was the only time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's two years between, and I notice. Oh, I haven't ridden this since the last time. It's time to get rid of it because I mean, <laughs> getting kids, time is not something. So I, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe having a midlife crisis as well in a couple of years when the kids yeah. are older, <laughs> and I'm hoping that uh, electric bikes have come a long way because that's that would be fun. I think because I realized that. Combustion engines is not really my thing. So right, um, my last uh, bike was a, a V twin with a, a race exhaust, and you could hear it coming about a mile away, and I, that was one of my favourite things about it. <laughs> <laughs> Loud pipes save yeah. lives. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see myself getting one in the future, but I'm thinking. I tried the Goldwyn because a, a friend of mine got one, and. It's like riding a sofa and it's really comfortable. <laughs> uh, but they are crazy expensive. Um, yeah. But I'm thinking the next I will. I have tried all the the Yamaha R1s and everything, all the top end where it, you're scary just to riding them. Um, so now I'm comfortable just getting a 400 cubic something with a two horsepower and... Uh, at a cheap price just to ride around i don't have to have the fastest or the most flashiest so i think i could probably get one but i'm not feeling bad for not riding it too often but now it's a question of where do i put it i don't have any yeah i mean i could have it in my workshop but i don't want to work on it and then it would just be in the way and where where should i put my organ and I was just about to say you could put the bike on top stuff. of your giant organ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you need another container, that is. You need to put an engine in the organ. <laughs> Ride yeah. that around. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was thinking if I could put a petrol engine to run the pedals or something so I don't have to pedal on because I was actually playing on it here the other day trying to see if I could remember some Christmas tunes. Uh, knowing that there will be a Christmas episode coming up soon and we need an <laughs> Two intro weeks for time. that. So <laughs> Yeah, that's the crazy part. It's oh, Christmas is so yeah. around the corner. Yep. <laughs> so, are you done with all the Christmas gifts? I'm not. We've not started. I bought a single one. No. <laughs> and that's right, so I'm not way the, ahead of you. Oh, that's good. You've got a you've got a big stack of gifts behind you, actually, haven't you? Yeah. Just move your head to the side. Wait, let me see if I can see which one's got my name on it. <laughs> Obviously, the biggest one. <laughs> Yeah, the biggest and the softest. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the biggest and the softest. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really uncharacteristic for me as well. I usually have like half of the gifts bought at this time, but no. No. 
December just snuck up on me. It's completely normal for me. In fact, I actually don't buy any gifts. Shell, Shell does all that gift buying, and she's not started yet. It's just been busy time, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's not getting any better. I have for the last couple of weeks said that I'm going to spend a few hours during the weekend and just get the rest of the gifts uh, online. And I still haven't done that. And now you're getting close to the limit where they say that if you are to be sure that it will arrive in time, you have to order within this and this date. And that's getting closer by the minute. The world is shrinking where you can actually buy (laughs) buy from. (laughs) And then it's yeah. just a local corner store. <laughs> yeah, in the petrol station. Yeah. Um, so we've got a little little um, a mini supermarket just down the road, a two minute walk. And I have gone there on Christmas Eve when my wife said, "I don't think we've got our daughter enough presents. Just go and see. Just go and see if you can find a few bits." And you go in there at you know half past nine in the evening, and the staff are just glaring at you, like, get the fuck out of here. We want to go on our <laughs> Christmas holiday. <laughs> it's It's been always a bit of a stereotype the thing that uh, a lot of guys just buy the present last day at the local petrol station or something. So me and a childhood friend, we actually had a rule that all the gifts that we had changed were going to be bought at the local uh, petrol station. Uh, at at latest uh, the day before Christmas, and of course uh, the one year he has actually bought a new car, so I just bought him a tow rope. <laughs> <laughs> Was very pleased with that one, and that uh, and he took the bait immediately so every year it was uh, something that was tied to the other people's car <laughs> in some way or another. I bet that's some of the best gifts you've ever had, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I yeah. still have a tow, tow rope and a toolkit or something. <laughs> yeah. Laying yeah, in that's cart. useful. Yeah. And extra headlights or just a <laughs> can of oil or something like that. Just pause there a second. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. Every 10 seconds yep. or so, I just... Oh, God. I Every know. 10 seconds or so, everything just freezes. Yeah. It's a bloody nightmare from my end. <laughs> I think I'll just listen to you two carry on if that's all right. <laughs> but I don't think I can participate much. <laughs> yes, um, uh, record some uh, some good. Aha, uh-huh, yeah, aha, uh-huh, and uh-huh. then we can just yeah. slice them in uh, over the show. So it sounds like yeah, you're there. Put in some giggles and. Uh... <laughs> We can start uh, throwing out the massive innuendos and then we just cut the uh, Glenn in just. <laughs> <laughs> no one will know the difference. <laughs> so I'm guessing uh, tech support is out of town then. It's not tech support issue. It's a Wi-Fi issue. It's um, It's been messing about all evening. I was hoping it was going to be all right for this. But when I was editing earlier, it was struggling, so... Obviously, now I'm talking about it, it seems to be absolutely fine, so let's carry on. <laughs> oh, no, there you go, you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be some gaps to to fix, perhaps. No, I was just going to say that I realized with the years that I need just as much structure and uh, creature comfort as my kids, so <laughs> even when I'm traveling alone, I would much rather be at home, so... Uh, we discussed it at work latest today that someone like, oh, it's so nice to go to a hotel room and then just spend a night on your own alone and just relaxing. And then another guy said, well, that's not relaxing. If I want to relax, then everyone else leaves so I can stay at home. And I was like, <laughs> yep, I'm with you on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what can that's you do right. at a hotel room? Yes, I can go there to sleep, but it's never going to be as good as my bed at home with yeah. then all my stuff in it if I want to do something. I'm just sitting in a hotel room with a too soft a bed, nothing to do, <laughs> just crap on the television with ads yeah. and everything. So, no. yeah. yeah, the best is when you're home alone for a weekend. That's the, that's the ultimate thing for me. Because then you actually get get some stuff done 
and it's just long enough time that you start missing the rest of the family and you're happy when they get home. Yeah. I realized that when you are home alone, as you said, you get all this shit done and then you realize, okay, if I could do this full time, like how efficient I could be and structure my days around building stuff. But then I think, I, I I haven't heard the entire episode yet, but I think it was the three northern makers in the last episode talking about where the week went. And it's like, mm-hmm. I think if making is your full-time occupation, you, you still then end up with like, what did I do with my time? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's the, now when you get a weekend every now and then, you become super efficient because you really want to use that. But if that would be your day-to-day situation, you would probably just fill it with unnecessary crap and then just end up <laughs> don't having enough time. Yeah, for, for me, that was the feeling when we got kids. Because when we got the first kid, then I, I got really efficient on, on doing stuff and thought, what did I do with all that time I had before we had a kid? And then we got the second kid, and I was like, oh, what did I do with all that time when we just had one kid? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's all, all a matter of perspective. I think. Mm-hmm.